Spiritual attainment, Hazrat Inayat Khan says, is attuning oneself to a higher pitch. It's opening the door to that which is hidden within us and stepping beyond that threshold into a place that's beyond what we know. And yet it brings us to a place of our true knowing. And so today, we're going to talk about letting go so that we can cross that threshold into our true knowing and awareness of our real higher self. It's kind of like the experience when you meditate. You know how when you sit in meditation, at first the mind is all wound up and taking you here, there, and everywhere, and eventually it unwinds. And then you get to this expanded place where suddenly you feel at one with the sounds around you and with yourself, it just is opening. It's kind of like, Oh, come on, Shelly, help me out. <laughs> come on, everybody. Oh. There's a vibration there that just brings us home to truth. Well, my truth is I am so honored to be back here again with you. You have touched my heart. This group has just to touch my heart. And there are people here that are beginning to be my spiritual buddies. And there's many faces that I recognize. I may not know the names yet, but I recognize you all. So I send you a big hug. Today I have an intention that every single one of you rises to a higher pitch today. That you leave here with a new expanded awareness of the truth and let go of what your comfort level is. This is just a little bitty thing that I'm asking of myself today. And you know, honestly, I come driving here saying to myself, what are you, crazy? <laughs> and I am a little bit crazy, okay, it's true. But honestly, I sincerely, my intention is that every single one prepares ye the way for a resurrection this Easter that is beyond what you've experienced before because we're ready. So as crazy as I am, I'll tell you what's behind me that makes me think, okay, come on, why not? And the reason is, oh, I'm not your age. I'm 53, just a couple years older than you guys. And... In the last couple years, I've realized that in the cycle of life, I am actually starting my decline. I mean, it's going to be a while, but I tell you, it's like getting up in the morning, I see myself walking like my dad did when he was old. And so, in realizing that, I've decided to renew my yoga practice, and I've become begun Kickboxing and TRX. <laughs> yeah, anyone do kickboxing? Yeah. <laughs> Did that happen to you when you were kickboxing? Oh, good. <laughs> oh, boy. So I have a kickboxing instructor who kicks my butt. Oh, my God. She does. The first time I went in for kickboxing, let me tell you, previous to that, when I was in shape, if I did 15 push-ups, I thought I was having a good day. On my first day with Marsha, excuse me, Martha, at Asian Sun in Hudson, she had me doing 50 push-ups my first day there. So, <laughs> I am.
am getting into shape. And she is making me realize that I could do things way beyond, beyond what my mind tells me I can do. So in kickboxing, we have gear. These are my kickboxing gloves. They look good on me. <laughs> and so it's important to wear these because when you hit, you don't want to hurt your hands. And if I wasn't wearing these, then I could just like not really hit and then go home and say, well, you know, nothing's really happening. I'm not really getting any better. So we wear gear in kickboxing. So I want to let you know that today, if you'd like, I'm going to be your spiritual workout coach. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. We're going to have a workout today. And you're going to put on some gear, too. And the gear that you're going to wear is the gear of letting go. It's the gear of letting go of everything you're accustomed to thinking about your spiritual growth and how to attain spiritual awareness and personal development. Everything. Now some people are probably saying, okay, yeah, I could do that. And there may be a few people here who somewhere in the recesses of the mind are saying, you know, my kids just left home for college. I'm an empty nester. I can't let go of it. I don't know what I'm going to do right now with my life. Or maybe there's someone who says, you know, my son is ill. He's sick. He needs me. And I need to take care of him and make sure he's okay. How do I let go of that? So there may be many things that we're like, that can I let go of? So as your workout coach, I say, can you open your mind during the service and let that go to see if something new comes in? Something new. Okay, you ready? Okay, somebody's yeah. Well, those who are ready, if there's enough, enough of us, there'll be a critical mass that everyone will rise to this new spiritual pitch. Mm -hmm. Well done. So, I can tell you something that has had a little bit of a problem of attuning to a higher pitch and letting go? Mother Nature. I mean, the winter of 2014 has to be the longest winter we have ever seen. Amen to that. Yesterday, 38 degrees, April 5th, and parkas? But you know, this winter has been a great exercise spiritually because when you look at it it mirrors how we could be wondering and when this issue I've been working on it I've done everything I could possibly do for the longest time and I'm seeing no change where's the resurrection where's my spring when will it be? you know that feeling and you know, when that goes on long enough, what seeps in is doubt. Maybe it'll never happen. Maybe spring will never come. Maybe it won't even be very good if it does come. And then you know where that leads to? Maybe all this I think about God really isn't. So the winter, this winter, has been a great opportunity to lay down what we need life to look like and to see life every day, every winter day, loving it just as it is. So who knows Shiva? You know Shiva, the Lord of Dance. 
Shiva, we are very lucky to have uh, Shiva at the Cleveland Museum of Art. And it just takes your breath away. There's something so powerful of Shiva. Shiva is the lord of dance. And it's the dance of life. Shiva is the lord of creation and destruction. Of manifestation and returning to source. So you'll see with Shiva, there's this beautiful ring of fire around him. And the ring of fire is the dance of life. It's the creation and the destruction. It's everything in our lives. All the things that we're creating that are coming into fruition. And all of the things, whether we want them to or not, that we have to let go of. All the things that are being born. All of the things that are dying. All of the things that we're manifesting and all of the times when they stop manifesting and we come back to return to source. So Shiva, as you notice, he has this beautiful leg out. And the leg out is his way of saying to you, come with me. Step outside that ring of cycle of life and death and creation and destruction. Come with me. And people would say, yeah, I'll come with you. I'll be a spiritual being. I'll let go. Oh, my God, i got to pay my rent next month. I have no idea where to get from. What am I going to do? Oh, my God, let me pray, let me pray. Oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, I don't know what I'm going to do. And Shiva says, come with me. Step outside the worry of the cycle of life and death. It's just going to go on and on and on for your whole life like that. Instead... Take a look, Shiva says, with his other hand, fear not, fear not, let go. And if you see, Shiva's foot is upon the dwarf of ignorance. The dwarf of ignorance is what keeps us from awareness of the enlightened mind that we already have. So Shiva is saying, let us escape from this ring, the circle of life and death and have and onward and what can I have and what can I keep and what do I need and how do I do this and let it go and have no fear. You know, one thing I want to mention, it may have been in the slide before, and it might be in the slide now, is that the caterpillar, to become a butterfly, had to let go of everything it knew to fly. And as Shelley sang so beautifully, that little furry worm actually could fly. And it's really true for us, too, to let go of everything we know, everything you know right now, about life and spirituality and let it go. Let it go without fear. How the heck do you do that? How do you let something like that go? I might lose my house. I'm going to let that go. I just lost my <coughs> brother. I'm going to let that go. You are much too soon. Well, let me ask you a question. Ready for your workout? Would you take your hand, put it in a fist, and I invite you to hold on tightly, really tightly to all the things that you hold on to, all the things in life that you want, all the things that you desire and wish would come to fruition all the myriad of things that you want. Because there is so much that we want. There's the things that we desire, we go towards. We say, I want that. I want it so bad. I'm going to intend it. I'm going to pray for it. I'm going to work for it. I'm going to go to school for it. I'm going to do everything I want to make sure that happens. I'm going to bring in that liberation to myself. And then there's the parts of the things that I don't want. I'm so tired of that job. I'm so tired of working to heal my body. 
I'm so tired to work my spiritual practice so that I could be at peace with everything and everybody. I'm working it. I'm working it. I'm so tired of the way it is. And so we hold on. Get back to holding on. I'm your coach. Hold on. Where's that fist? Hold that fist tight. Keep it tight because this is how we hold on to everything in our life. And there's so many things that we hold on to. How many thoughts a day do we have? 50 to 60,000 thoughts a day. How many thoughts are those, I wish he had done it that way. Why did they do that? Oh man, I shouldn't have done that. Now I'm never going to get that. I want to get a skateboard and I need another dollar for it and I messed up and I didn't get it. We hold on so much of the day. So much of the day. So much of the day. How's your hand feeling? <laughs> So hold on a little bit longer because in human form, in material form, we are dense. We are slow. This is why people who are mediums say that those who come in from the other side say it's hard to come back into this realm. It's so slow. It's so dense. And look how slow and dense it is to hold on to everything that you want. But in the spiritual realm, things are very fast. It flows. It's quick. And when we relate to our spiritual realm, we tap into the answers. We manifest quickly. Life just goes much faster. We're lighter and breezier. Just like that experience in meditation, when the mind unwinds, there's a lightness of being. You know what I'm talking about? So how's this feeling? You liking it? Oh, you let go. Come on, come on. Okay. So now I invite you to let go. See what it feels like after such a long time of heavy holding. Do you notice it's hard to move your hand? This is what it's like when you hold on to things in this plane. It's hard to get things moving. I can't, I mean, I could force my fingers to move, but of their own, they're still locked up. This is what happens to us as spiritual beings when we take on this material realm and hold on everything the way we see it or want it. But what do you do? Let me show you. Please take note of my handy dandy hair dryer. Please take note of my handy dandy spiritual essence, also known as flower. <laughs> so when the problems come, like lint comes to a flat of a dryer, the, so much lint comes through that my dryer breaks down. It doesn't work. So I have to take off the back and remove the lint so that the air can flow through. But when we bring in our spiritual essence to all 50,000 thoughts a day and just let it flow through us, We just bring the spiritual essence with us. And it flows right through. And then we maintain the lightness of being that is our true self. We think that we need to think about how to fix things. But when we let things flow through us, we access that hidden realm, which just supplies us with the answers in the moment. And the rest of the time, we're free to be the truth of our nature, spiritual beings in earthly form. So I learned about this letting go with my spiritual coach, Reverend August Gold, 
she taught me very, very clearly that something is not happening to me, it's always happening for me. It's not happening to me, it's happening for me. So, I don't know that you know this about me, but before I was a minister, I was in the film business. Yeah, I was a set decorator in film. I worked on movies and TV shows. I was in the business about 22 years, and I had my life all planned out for me. And one day I went to work, and I was told on this certain television show, you know what, we have a new production designer, and she's bringing in her own production designer. Behind the scenes, I knew there was somebody who said, get rid of her. So that day I was essentially fired. I went home that night, and I could have gone back and done many, many, many more jobs, lived my life out in the film business. But instead, I said, that's it. I'm done with the film business. And I'm not angry at all with that person who did that. In fact, I call him an angel in my life. Because if I hadn't let that flow through me, let it go, I wouldn't be here today with you, standing here doing my mission, my purpose, to help people lift up to a higher vibration. So good for him that he did that. And good for me that I let go. I let go. It stayed light, and my life changed. Just like that caterpillar to the butterfly. So how do you do it then? I mean, really, really, when you're going through it, and you go through it a lot, you know, physical problems, problems with relating to others, problems with finances, problem knowing what the next step in life is. How do you do it? How do you let go? How can you let go? You be on the high watch. You take witness to what's going on as a spiritual being. So I have a very dear friend named Kathleen. And she had the luck to meet, a, what is it, um, Kriya Yoga Guru. And she, in an instant, decided to follow him to India for two years. And she was out with him one day, as they usually do. They went out to help the poor and the needy, and they were working in the hot sun. And there was one day where it was excessively hot. It was 125 degrees. That was a little hot. And they were out there for hours. So how did she feel? She felt pretty bad, dehydrated. And she went up to the guru and said, Guruji, I'm really sorry, but I'm spent. I'm dehydrated. I'm about to pass out. I need to get into the shade. I need to get some water. I got to stop. Guruji said, Kathleen, don't oppose it. Don't resist. You'll be fine. So Kathleen, sat or stood, and she felt in her body, from the high watch of witness, the sweat pouring off her face. And she felt the nausea within her. And she felt the feeling of the heat. And she just was on the high watch as an observer of it. She no longer resisted. It was like, oh my god, I don't feel good. I can't do this. Said she let that go. It's like, what does it feel like in this human form, in this utter heat? And then that feeling, it passed through her. And just like the guru said, she was fine. So what do you do when you have those issues that love to get you? Or the people that love to get you? Those triggers that love to make you get attached to that ring of I need to make it this way or I don't want to have it that way. You step through that threshold into your knowing. 
and you say to yourself, hey, I am a spiritual being. I am. And so that you go on the high watch, you let go, you let it flow, you don't resist, you don't oppose, but you observe. You feel it in your heart. I'm feeling it. But I'm observing it from the high watch. You get it? You get it? So you let it flow through you. You don't resist. You let it go. And then from the high watch, you observe what it's like to be a spiritual being in human form. This will lift up your energy. This will tap you into your unconscious for answers. This will make your life so much easier. It's the truth of who you are. So there's a parable about an elephant and three blind men. You know that parable? One of the blind men is touching the tail of the elephant and says, oh, elephant is a snake. Another blind man is touching the leg of the elephant. Oh, elephant is a tree. Another blind man is leaning up against the elephant. Elephant is a wall. This isn't a story about blindness, and it's not a story about elephants. It's a story about consciousness. When you stay focused, what is happening in that ring of fire in this world? All you're going to see is the tail, the leg, or the wall. But when you step back, you let it go, you let it flow, and you look on the high watch, that's where you'll find your bliss. It's a brave new world. It's a place where you let go of how you see life right now. Because you'll walk into life with no thinking about it anymore. You've let it go. And then suddenly you expand. Where do you expand? Where do you expand? expanding into an own experience in your life and you're on the high watch witnessing a life and you're saying and this is good this is good if you do this it's a brave new world and I can't wait to meet you there namaste <laughs>